Isn't it a lovely day? Mm. I've just run all the way round Magic Mountain. I'm ever so thirsty. What would you say to a cup of tea? Hello, cup of tea. Oh, Doris, <laughs> I didn't mean what would you say. I meant... Yeah, oh, never mind. I'm going to put the kettle on. Like Polly? Don't tease, Doris. Boy hamsters can make tea just as well as girl hamsters. Yes, I'm sure they can, Morris. Let's sing Polly's song anyway. Polly put the kettle on, Polly put the kettle on, Polly put the kettle on, we'll all have tea. Suki take it off again, Suki take it off again, Suki take it off again, they've all gone away. <laughs> Morris put the kettle on, Morris put the kettle on, Morris put the kettle on, we'll all have tea. Doris, take it off again, Doris, take it off again, Doris, take it off again, they've all gone away. <laughs> <laughs> What's that noise? Where's all that steam coming from? Hoot, hoot! Watch out, everybody! Oh, it's Trevor the train! Oh, oh, Trevor! Trevor! Come back! Come back! Oh, sorry, Morris! Sorry, Doris! Overshot the mark a bit. It was the new magic coal in my engine. It makes me go ever so fast. Do you eat coal, Trevor? Of course I do! That's what keeps trains going, see? Look, Talking of eating, did you hear what happened to Dotty the dragon the other day? No. What? Well, sit down and I'll tell you. <music> Dotty's Pancake Day. It was a fine, sunny afternoon on Magic Mountain, and I thought I would visit my friend, Dotty the Dragon. Clever Trevor, clever Trevor, clever Trevor, I went as I steamed along. But as I came round the side of the mountain, what do you think I saw? I was so surprised, I put my brakes on with a big crunch. There were pancakes everywhere. Pancakes on the ground, pancakes hanging from the trees, and pancakes on the bushes. There were even pancakes on Dotty's washing line. Dotty looked worried as more pancakes jumped out of the pan. Hello, Dotty, I called. What are you doing with all those pancakes? Oh, hello, Trevor, said Dotty. Don't you know it's pancake day today? No, I said, I'm not too keen on pancakes, see? I prefer a nice, tasty sack of coal myself. But why have you made so many pancakes, Dot? Well, I made these pancakes with magic, but the spell won't stop. Have you tried taking the pan off the fire, I asked. Why, no, replied Dotty. I hadn't thought of that. As soon as Dotty took the pan off the fire, the last pancake jumped out of the pan and landed on my funnel. Hello, I said. What am I going to do with all these pancakes, Trevor? I know what you can do, Dot, I said. You pile all the pancakes up on a big tray and put the tray on my funnel to keep the pancakes warm. Then I'll take you all over Magic Mountain so you can give the pancakes to everyone as a special treat. <whistles> Dotty was delighted. Trevor, she said, sometimes I think you're the cleverest engine in the world. Well, that made me feel very pleased, and I could feel the coals inside my engine glowing. Dotty had never said anything so nice to me before. She ran to fetch a big tray, piled all the pancakes on it, and put it carefully on my nice warm funnel. All aboard the pancake special, I said. Dotty jumped up, and with a hoot hoot, toot toot, we were off to give everyone on Magic Mountain a surprise pancake treat. was very 
clever of you, Trevor. Yeah, I'm a clever Trevor. Well, that's the noise I make, see? Clever Trevor, clever Trevor, uh, clever Trevor. Trevor, <laughs> I think it's time for breakfast. Oh, good. Fancy a pancake, Doris. If you've still got one to spare. And then we can both listen to Nigel's poem. It's about what chickens have for breakfast. Oh, great. Well, jump up on my engine, Doris, and keep warm while you listen. The Chicken's Breakfast. <coughs> Said the first little chicken with a queer little squirm. I wish I could find a fat little worm. Said the next little chicken with an odd little shrug. I wish I could find a fat little slug. Said the third little chicken with a sharp little squeal. I wish I could find some nice yellow meal. Now see here, said the mother from the green garden patch. If you want any breakfast, just come here and scratch. <coughs> Well, if that's what chickens have for breakfast, I'm glad I had a pancake. Oh, don't worry, Doris. I expect they have something much nicer for tea. And something even nicer than that when they have parties. Oh, hello, Morris boy. Oh, where did you spring from? Well, Carol's visiting Magic Mountain today, so I went to meet her at Magic Mountain Junction. Oh, that's my station. Yes. And Carol was telling me what her friend Sammy Scarecrow had to eat at his party. Will you tell us, Carol? Of course I will. Sammy Scarecrow's Party For year after year, Sammy Scarecrow had stood in Farmer Green's field, forgotten. His clothes had become old and tattered, and his hat was full of holes. Then one evening, the wood wizard stepped out of the wood and said, Sammy, tomorrow is your 21st birthday, and the woodland folk have decided to give a party for you. Sammy had never been so excited. He didn't know what to do with himself all next day. At sunset, the wood wizard stepped out of the wood again. He handed Sammy a little box. Many happy returns on your 21st birthday, Sammy. Eagerly, Sammy opened the box. Inside was a tiny acorn, and underneath it was written, Plant me in a moonbeam's glow, water me to make me grow. Before the moon rose, the guests began to arrive. The elfin folk flew in on the backs of moths. The fairy queen came in grand style, in a coach drawn by a long team of ants with ladybirds as footmen. Dwarfs rode in on the backs of moles from underground tunnels, and a party of gnomes marched in singing and playing musical instruments. All the guests brought presents. Sammy was thrilled when he found among them a new red overcoat for the winter, a pair of baggy blue trousers, a yellow scarf, and a shiny top hat for his head. Thank you, thank you, he cried. I do wish I had a feast for our guests. It's time you planted your acorn, the wood wizard said. Look, the moon has risen. <whistles> Carefully, Sammy planted the acorn in the path of the moonbeam and watered it. In moments, it became a great oak tree. Sammy cried out in delight. Oh! The wood wizard, wearing his tall, pointed hat, stepped to the tree, stretched out his hand towards it, and called out in a loud voice, Birthday tree, to be of use, show the guests what you produce. At once, things began to appear on the tree, on twigs and branches and leaves. Fudge, candies licorice, jellies of different colours, ice creams and tasty tidbits of all kinds. Sammy cried out delightedly, Oh, oh, please help yourselves! The guests did help themselves, but whatever they took from the tree was at once replaced. The wood wizard cried, Now feast all night 
and dance with glee round Sammy Scarecrow's birthday tree. Dance and feast the guests did, until at last the wood wizard held up his hand and cried, Midnight is about to strike. Candles, candles, come alight. There was a flash, and 21 candles lit up on the tree. Everyone cheered and clapped. Linking hands, all the guests danced round the tree, singing Happy Birthday. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to Sammy, happy birthday to you. They danced and sang and feasted until somewhere a clock struck twelve, midnight. The candles went out, the tree shrank into the ground, the guests whispered good night to Sammy. Good night, Sammy. Thank you, Sammy. Oh, thank you, Wood Wizard, cried Sammy. Thank you all. I'll never, never forget this wonderful party. Well, if ever you see a scarecrow in a field wearing a red overcoat, baggy blue trousers, a yellow scarf and a top hat, you'll know it's Sammy Scarecrow. Lucky old Sammy, fudge and licorice and ice cream. <laughs> Don't people eat funny things? There's nothing funny about ice cream, Doris. It's yummy. I know. But what about blackbird pie? Blackbird pie? Ugh. There's no such thing. Yes, there is. There's a song about a king who wanted to eat blackbird pie. <gasps> oh, yes. Sing a song of sixpence. Let's sing it. Sing a song of sixpence, a pocket full of rye Four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie When the pie was opened, the birds began to sing Wasn't that a dainty dish to serve before the king? The king was in his counting house, counting out his money The queen was in the parlour, eating bread and honey The maid was in the garden, hanging out the clothes Along came a blackbird and pecked off her nose Sing a song of sixpence, a pocket full of rye Four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie When the pie was open, the birds began to sing Wasn't that a dainty dish to set before the king? Sing a song of sixpence, a pocket full of rye Four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie When the pie was opened, the birds began to sing Wasn't that a dainty dish to set before the king? The king was in his counting house, counting out his money The queen was in the parlour, eating bread and honey The maid was in the garden, hanging out the clothes Along came a blackbird and pecked off her nose Sing a song of sixpence, a pocket full of rye Four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie When the pie was opened, the birds began to sing Wasn't that a dainty dish to set before the king? go fishing? Yes, yeah, sometimes. But I always catch the most extraordinary things. That's funny. So do I. 
I went fishing, took some bait, didn't go early, didn't go late. Caught eight fishes to put in my pail. Seven were mackerel, but the eighth was a whale. The seven were easy to put into the tin, but the whale caused me trouble before I packed him in. Took my catch home, what did mother say? Get those eight fish out of here, we're having steak today. Hello, Morris Boyle. That's the noise I make when my wheels run over that bit of rough ground near Magic Mountain Junction. Hello, Boyle. Hello, Boyle. Hello, Boyle. Trevor, <laughs> Trevor, I think you're getting a bit overexcited. Sure. Uh, why not rest your wheels and listen to a story? Oh, all right. What's the story about? It's about the frog, the cat, and the little red hen. <laughs> In a little house in the corner of the farmyard lived a frog, a cat, and a little red hen. The little red hen was busy all day long, cleaning and washing, polishing and cooking. But the frog and the cat were much too lazy to help. One day, the little red hen decided to bake a loaf of bread. The frog and the cat were still being very lazy, lying in bed. Who will go and buy the flour? asked the little red hen. Not I, said the frog. Not I, said the cat. Then I'll have to go and buy it myself, said the little red hen. And she did. When she got back from the shops, she said, Who will make the dough? Not I, said the frog. Not I, said the cat. Then I'll have to make the dough myself, said the little red hen. And she did. When she'd washed the flour off her feathers, she said, Who will light the stove? Not I, said the frog. Not I, said the cat. Then I'll have to light the stove myself, said the little red hen. And she did. When the bread was baked to a golden brown, the little red hen lifted it out of the oven and said, Who will cut the bread for me? Not I, said the frog. Not I, said the cat. Then I'll have to cut the bread myself, said the little red hen. And she did. Now, said the little red hen, who will help me eat the bread? I will, said the frog. So will I, said the cat. Oh, no, you won't, cried the little red hen. And with the bread under one wing and the butter under the other, she flew up into the rafters and ate it all herself. It was delicious. Morris, I can't hear a word you're saying. Oh, sorry, Morris. I was just eating some biscuits. Would you like one? Oh, yes, please. Oh, Doris, what a beautiful biscuit tin. Can I have it when the biscuits are all finished? What do you want it for? Well, you see, there are all sorts of things you can do with empty biscuit tins. Like what? Listen. The Three Biscuit Tins. I've got a biscuit tin, a biscuit tin or any tin. I turn it upside down to make a soldier's drum. I've got a biscuit tin, a biscuit tin to put beads in. Then my biscuit tin sounds like a shower of rain. I've got two biscuit tins, two biscuit tins joined by a string. Then my biscuit tins make a telephone. 
I've got two biscuit tins, two biscuit tins with two long strings. Now, my biscuit tins, make a pair of stilts. I've got three biscuit tins, three biscuit tins which make a din. When on my biscuit tins, I play the xylophone. I've got three biscuit tins, three biscuit tins with biscuits in. Which tin shall I choose to eat a biscuit from? I've got four biscuit tins, four biscuit tins, four biscuit tins. <laughs> Morris, what on earth would you do with four biscuit tins? I'd make them into wheels for our car. We haven't got a car. Oh, spoil sport. <laughs> Never mind, Morris. Stephen's going to tell us a funny story. That'll cheer you up. Oh, good. I'm going to eat some more biscuits while I'm listening. Then I might have enough tins to make a car. Shh, Morris. Clumsy Cleo. Princess Cleo was a very helpful princess. She was also very clumsy. People usually tried to keep out of her way. They called her Clumsy Cleo, though they loved her very much. One day, she wanted to help the royal cook. Well, if you must help, said the royal cook, you can mix the king's birthday cake. But Clumsy Cleo tripped over the cat and spilled cake mixture all over the fish fingers. Oh, dear, groaned Cleo. It's a fish finger birthday cake now. Cook, shall I pick them out? she asked. No, you will not, screamed the cook. Go outside and plant these cabbages. Cleo took the cabbages and planted them beautifully in the flower beds, among the roses and lilies and carnations. When the cook saw where Cleo had planted the cabbages, she burst into tears, then went off to bed with a headache. Cleo was very sorry. I know, she said to herself. I'll make the biggest and best trifle ever. That'll cheer up, cook. And she happily mashed and splashed away while half the jelly and strawberries and custard landed on the kitchen floor. That night, two robbers crept through the palace gates. They wanted to steal the king's birthday tea from the kitchen. But when they stepped inside the door, they skidded on the jelly and custard, crash, right into the bowls of trifles. The palace guards and the courtiers came running. <laughs> Clumsy Cleo, laughed the king. You saved the party. Well done. Oh, Morris, I'd completely forgotten something. What? It's Pancake Day. I know, but we eat all sorts of things on Pancake Day. Yes, I know, but what do we always do on Pancake Day? <gasps> oh, yes. We sing, sing our, our pancake, pancake song. song. Hooray! Every year on Pancake Day, we have cakes and jellies too. Sandwiches and sausage rolls help to fill our bellies. Oh, sometimes we eat far too much. Then we have such tummy aches. Cause our pancakes aren't quite like the ones your mommy makes. Bing bong and a rat a tat tat. Cherry aid and coffee. Baked beans and chocolate sauce, jelly eels and toffee. Bing bong and a rat a tat tat, peanut butter and custard. Ice cream and mushy peas, marmalade and mustard. Goodbye, Goodbye everybody. everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yes, be Goodbye. back soon. Bye-bye.